Dave Stevens for the Disability Channel in Tempe, Arizona. I'm with a man, uh, a legend to me, a uh, former Dodger, and he's been with the Angels for so long, uh, Mike Sosha. Mike, how's this offseason been for you? you got a lot of changes. We have, Dave, but we're excited about it. I think our, uh, our core is uh, really a deep team. Uh, we've got a lot of young players who are coming up getting on a depth chart. So we paid a lot of attention to, to our pitching depth, and I think we're uh, going to have the tight rotation that can hopefully get us to our goal, and hopefully our bullpen will keep going. And you also have the opportunity to manage something that hasn't happened uh, in, the, in the big league since the days of Babe Ruth, uh, a two-way player as a pitcher and uh, DH. Uh, how's Otani looking for you? Uh, Shohei's doing very well with it. Um, you know, First, we need him to um, put all the attention he can into his pitching, which takes a lot. And after that, we're getting him acclimated to swinging the bat. So uh, in his first couple of weeks, he's doing a good job with it. And uh, you know, we'll see, um, we'll see well, how he fits into the season and how he can contribute offensively. And you've added some big bats. I mean, uh, this is going to be a pretty impressive lineup on paper. Uh, yeah, but you know what we do with paper. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah, right away. So uh, our, our job is really on the field to get these guys playing as a group. There's a lot of talented players. We'll make sure that we get them playing to their um, optimal performance and that's what spring training is for. Do you find yourself too with the new faces? Do you end up being part psychologist trying to figure out personalities and things like that as far as getting everybody along and in the lineup and working together for one cause? That's not the that's not the biggest challenge. You have to set the environment that, for sure but uh, the biggest thing is just right now is getting each individual where they need to be. And as the season goes on, hopefully we start the season that you know, that team bonding happens and you uh, go out there and play good baseball. And there's a lot of new players in our clubhouse, but they've, uh, they've all been embraced and everyone's getting acclimated to our system, so we're moving in the right direction. And how much do you expect a leadership role out of a guy like Kinsler and those kind of things where he can really add to your younger players? All we ask guys is really just to lead by example, play the game hard, and uh, the guys that can do more and be more vocal, guys like Albert, who's been around for a while, or, or, or Ian, uh, so be it. Uh, but most, mostly we want guys to focus on what they need to do, and uh, if they can help other players, uh, all, the, all the better. I ran into your old skipper, had the privilege to interview Tommy Lasorda yesterday, yeah. 90 years old, 69 years of baseball. You think you're going to be in baseball that long? Uh, I don't believe so, but I think... Uh, <laughs> I think Tommy's a special person. Uh, I had the privilege to play for Tommy for 13 seasons, and um, you know I don't think I've met a more competitive person anywhere in my life. And uh, I think that rubbed off on a lot of us. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, I think he's uh, he's once in a lifetime guy. Do you see any of his managing style a bit in you that maybe we're not aware of? Uh, you know, Tommy was always uh, preaching aggressiveness. I think that uh, had an effect on all of us that played for him. No matter how slow of a runner you are, there were things that you needed to do to help your team on the bases, and you could do. Um, there was always the, uh, you know, the importance of playing hard. Uh, there was always the importance of uh, understanding your teammates and, uh, and getting along the clubhouse. And um, you know, he was a master of setting that environment. For you kids out there, this guy was a heck of a catcher back in the day. Uh, we were sitting around just chitting, chatting. Uh, what would be one of your best memories as a player? Definitely winning the World Series in 1988 is the ultimate for me, but also I was on the 1981 championship team. I think when, you, uh, when you're in this game, it's about playing it. It's not about managing it or coaching it. That's a great part that we get to uh, experience now, but game's about playing it. So for all the youth out there, enjoy your playing time you have. Enjoy the game. Enjoy every moment. And um, so for myself, it's just being part of two World Championships teams. Where do you get the motivation to continue? I mean, this is a long season. It's longer with spring training. Your off season is long. I mean, how do you stay fresh? Where's your motivation? How do you make it fun? It's fun. Uh, I think if you have to make it fun, uh, you should probably leave. Um, I look forward to coming here every day and look forward to getting the opportunity to manage all the time I've had here. It's been a great privilege. I don't take that for granted. Uh, but I've never had any problem getting excited about baseball. And it's uh, probably helped me to stay as long as I have. As we see subtle changes with timing clocks and innings and trying to speed up the game, I mean, do you also feel that we're leaning towards a six man rotation? Is that going to be the next wave of baseball? I think right now uh, it works for us. Um, I don't think. You know, most teams would do this unless they had some of the issues we had with our whole rotation. Um, is it going to go to six? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a trend. I think right now it's just uh, it makes sense in our situation. I think it's going to be sensitive to each team. 
uh, but it's certainly something that, uh, that we're going to explore this year. All of us clowns in the media, of course, we have our picks and our expectations and all those kind of things, uh, but it gets down to one thing, and it's it's about winning. And how do you convey that to these guys that they can get to that plateau? Well, they know it's a, it's totally about the team. Uh, we're going to play team baseball, and they're a team at bat you have, but every individual is responsible to, to get to the level they need to by the time the season opens. So uh, the season's a grind. Um, these guys are, uh, are out there to win. They understand the talent of our team, and we look forward to getting the season started. Where's your go-to place to eat when you're home? Oh, well, when I'm uh, out in California, I've got a couple places. Uh, uh, one's a little Italian restaurant called Rustico near where I live in Westlake Village. And um, if we're down in um, uh, Newport Beach, where we also have a place, there's a lot of places. Um, I mean, there's Sapori, which is Italian again, or Javier's, which is Mexican. Uh, I never turn away from a good steak from Astros, that's for sure. And when these guys are cranking all that new wave heavy metal rock and roll stuff, do you ever want to sneak in throw, throw in some of your favorites, and what would that be? Um, I love uh, the 70s music. I love everything from uh, the Bo from Motown to, uh, you know, to David Bowie, to Elton John, all the, you know, Billy Joel, all the, uh, Bruce Springsteen, um, all the great artists in the 70s. And I remember, uh, you know, the new music now, even though it's a little different than what we grew up with. Uh, I remember my dad talking about it. You know, he he grew up in the in the 30s and 40s, and uh, they listened to, listen to a different type of music. But he embraced the music that we listen to, and we embrace the music that any individual likes. All right, I love the 70s too. So, thank you, Mike. Best of luck this season to you, you and the Angels. I'm Dave Stevens for the Disability Channel. Just living the dream in Tempe, Arizona.